Welcome to Fly TV. I'm Niklas Bauer, and today we're doing this. So today we're going to go pike fly fishing, but I'm also going to spend a few minutes to talk to you about what kind of gear we use, what kind of fly we, flies we use, and we're going to fish the fish that has spawned already. Um, it's late in the season, um, it's warm water, so we're going to see if we can get some popper action, and if that doesn't work, we're going to take them on probably intermediate lines and big flushable flies. So follow me on a cool trip. In the first Big Daddy film we made, the Fly TV issue, um, I had a lot of questions regarding what kind of gear I use, what kind of rods I fish with, what kind of lines I use, when I use them, and what kind of flies I prefer and stuff like that. So I thought I'd take five minutes to walk you through this, just a quick what I use. Um, we're going to try to uh, get some action on a popper rod here. And um, this is the uh, Big Daddy. The Vision's Big Daddy, eight and a half foot for line nine. It's a really nice rod. I fish it with a floating line. It's the same um, as the Big Daddy line. And um, I just fish a big popper on a single hook. They're easy to tie and you can make them in various color. They're really cool. It's good action in the summertime. It's a little bit too cold in the water at the moment, but it's still a, it's, it's fun when you get them up on the surface. This is probably what I fish the least of the time with the popper rod, but it's it's fun and these rods work really good for for other conditions, too But if you're gonna buy one rod or at least one line weight, I think you should buy a 909 uh, And you should rig it with an intermediate line Th that line you can use for almost everything uh, You can fish it from almost the surface and all the way down to probably in a meter and a half um, This is a nine foot for line nine weight a nine weight uh, a nine feet rod uh, I like these foam handles because they don't they don't get dirty, don't get old, and the action of these rods are a little bit softer, so they're easy to move these big flies. I don't prefer these really fast saltwater rods because I think they're kind of hard to get it, get it going when you uh, fish really big flies. So this is my first choice of a of a, of a rod and a combination with line. And the second rod I use a lot is. Um, the Sink 3. Here's the same, same rod again. It's a Big Daddy 909. Um, this is a Sink 3 line. Um, and this is a line that you can fish a little bit deeper with. You can fish it all the way down to probably 3 meters, depending on what kind of fly you, are, you have on it. You can also go up to a 10 weight if you fer, prefer like it, if you fish really big flies and, and very windy conditions. But I think the 9, the nine weights work very well. Um, and then probably the rod. The, the line weight I fish the least is a Sink 5, um, but it's really good to have. Um, probably just have a spool in the boat, or if you go in a in a river or something like that, you can get deep really. You can get down deep really fast. But also sometimes in the summertime when the fish is standing on like two meters of water, and you need to fish fast. You need to have these fast sinking lines because otherwise you can't get the fly down enough to be able to fish it really fast. If you fish an intermediate line, for example, really, really fast, the fly will just go straight up to the surface. 
So that's why they're really good to have. And um, I think you should never leave your home without a fast sinking line. And then if we go over to the flies I use. Um, today I prefer to fish with a tube fly. And there are a few various reasons for it. For, mostly is that you have a good durability of the flies. You can fish with them a long time. You can have a lot of fish on them. And even when the hook is shot, you can just change the hook and you're good to go again. So you can easily have a hundred fish on a fly. And I like to fish these a little bit natural colors. These guys, they imitate a, a perch. They're in olive and orange and stuff like that. And they work very good when the fish has spawned and it's becoming a little bit warmer in the water. And they go to these natural colors and they go starting to feed on perch because they spawn right after the pike. And then, of course, a green and gold. Never leave home without it. It's a very good color that will work almost um, the whole year round. And then a pattern that has been working really well in Sweden is the, we call it a kind of a bream pattern. Uh, in the spring and also late in the fall, the bream comes in in big schools in these shallow areas where we're gonna fish. And then you need, to have, you need to have really big flies and you wanna tie them in gold and silver that imitates these big breams. And uh, you need to have them big because otherwise the, the big fish won't, won't take its small bait. They, they are, they're feeding on these like one pound uh, breams and you need to have big flies for that. And then a pattern that, that is, a, is based on a, a lure in Sweden. And this is called a dirty roach. It's kind of a, yeah, it's a kind of a dirty roach. It's white, olive, green and gold. These are basically the colors that you could work um, almost every water with and also all conditions. If you just throw in a, like a blue and silver or something like that or a silver bait fish pattern, you're, you have probably most of the conditions you will ever face, you know, like that. So that's a good tip of mine. Uh, keep in a little bit uh, natural colors, imitate, like kind of match the hatch and um, you will have a good selection of flies. And then the question is how we rig these guys. I have a good friend down in Denmark who um, a few, few years ago showed me how to, um, actually he was tying all his pike hooks with a, with a stinger hook. And um, Thomas, his name is, um, he, uh, hooked me into these and I have uh, kind of put the development a little bit further. Um, it's, a, it's a big fly, fly hook and then you tie a stinger to it. Um, this is 60 pound titanium wire and then you can choose whatever kind of stinger hook you want on the end there. But the big, good thing with this is you can really, you know, do whatever with it and it will always be straight. I attach this to um, 35 pound uh, a, a wire. This is a vision wire, it's, it's coated. So it's really easy to, um, to twist and then you take a lighter and burn it. You can put some shrink tubes over the joints here and you won't fray it easy. And then it's, it's really easy. You just make a big loop in the end here. You take your fly. push it through like that and you just tighten it like that and then you will have a hook that is situated kind of um, where the fish will attack if they attack for the head and then you will have a stinger here in the back if they just nibble in the back and a lot of these big fish are usually hooked in the south of, side of the mouth like that on this little stinger here and if you want this fly to go just a slightly deeper, if you fish it on a floating line, you will have a hard time getting it on the surface. I always carry a box of um, different uh, cone heads and uh, different kind of beads that you can put in front of it. This is an XXL cone. They're quite big, but they're not heavy at all. Uh, this is what I use a lot if I want to have a little bit more jig action to the fly. You just 
push that through there, have it in front of the fly, and then you just loop this to your, to your nylon on the fly line, and you're good to go. This was also, they will, it will create a small sound when it clicks in the eyes here too. That's kind of a clicking sound that actually works really good. And also it will get the fly to have, get a little bit down deeper, but it'll also get a, a jigging action to it. And it works really well when it's a little bit warmer and the fish is standing in areas where you want to drop the fly and then jig it up to the surface and all the way like that. So, and, um, so that's basically how I rig them. And uh, what you can do is you can play around with it. And if you want to have really big flies, you can just push another tube in front of it and you can have these 60 centimeters fly. So do you want to see how you make these flies and also how you tie the hook rig? Visit Canal Gatis YouTube channel and you will see there's a whole bunch of different cool pike patterns and also different type how, how you can make the rigs. And um, subscribe on it and you will get a new film more often than you believe. So check it out. So we've been fishing these areas all around here now with a popper fly, trying to say, see if we can get some to, to hit it on the surface. We had some nice fish falling under the popper. You can see it with, your eye, with the eyewear that they were falling slightly underneath, but they didn't come up and hit it. So I'm going to go back and work the same surface again, the same area, but with an intermediate line and a big flushable fly and see if we can get some action. That's something that's really important that if you have fish following, if you have an area where, where you see action or you see bait fish or something, follow it, go over it again, go over it again with a different fly or a different line weight. So maybe you fish it a little bit deeper down or maybe also fish a little bit closer to the surface because the fish has the eyes on the head, on top of it, not on the bottom. So sometimes a big mistake is that you fish under the fish. So we're going to try to work this area again here, all along the side of the bank here. The fish spawned in here and probably they're moving out now. We have big concentrations of bream and uh, hopefully they will come out and start, start to eat these guys. So uh, we give it a try. It's a big 40 centimeter fly on the tube. So we get it, give it a go. A good thing too is to, to re-strip. Most of you guys probably definitely know what this is, but if you have a line basket, you just pull out the line and you re-strip it in the basket again. Then you get the right line on the right place. So you don't start with all the line in the boat or in the water.
nice fish. Just came up and hammered the fly. Been fishing poppers here for a while and we had some fish following it, but it didn't go up and hit it on the surface. So I put a put a big yellow and silver tube fly on it and just hammered it after <laughs> I think it was the second cast. It's a nice fish. Fat one. I think just, he just had a bream for breakfast. <laughs> Whoop. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. Come back So when you're alone and, and um, you're fishing alone for these big fish and you're using a, a stinger, stinger hook on the back, it's easy to, to snag in your fingers. So I, I prefer to net these big ones. And I use a rubber net, a big net with a rubber that's coated with rubber, the net. And it's really, really nice for the fish. And they're really easy to calm and, and uh, hold them in the net like this. This is a nice fish. It's definitely 100 centimeter plus. As you can see, she had a probably a bream for breakfast or at least she had it a few days ago she won't get hurt at all we just try to unleash her now unhook her actually like that she was on the she was hooked on the stinger hook in the back of the mouth so as you can see you see the fin of a bream in there <laughs> so I'm curious to see the, the weight of this nice fish. So we'll just take a, a carp net or a, a, a pike bag, get it all wet so her skin doesn't hurt. We gently put her in here. There we go. Also, it gets all dark in this bag. So, so they get really calm and when we weigh her, we don't put any tension to her back spine. So it's 11 kilos almost in the bag. So it's, it's somewhere close to 10 kilo fish. It's a nice one, nice evening fish. It's getting a little bit darker in the evening now. We're catching massive amounts of, of these small fish, but it, doesn't, it really doesn't mean that you're in the wrong spot. It can actually be that you're in the right spot, but 
we'll see that the small fish is starting to bite really heavily and they're crashing the flies in the surface too, so it's quite fun actually. All the fish are spawned and it's almost 20 degrees in the water, so... They like these yellow flies. Still the same fly. Getting hammered. Not a big one, but they get bigger. Let's get a, catch them in probably 10 years or so. These rocky parts here looks really nice. The fish is gonna move out from this cove here probably pretty soon. Oh, oh actually, it was a good spot. <laughs> Uh, let's give him a try. One more try. It's cool when they hit the flies in the surface like that. Up oh, there again. <laughs> I just love this. <laughs> This is so great. Welcome to Fly TV. I'm Niklas Bauer, and today we're doing this. So today we're gonna go pike fly fishing, but I'm also gonna spend a few minutes to talk to you about what kind of gear we use, what kind of fly we, flies we use, and we're gonna fish the fish that has spawned already. Um, it's late in the season, um, it's warm water, so we're gonna see if we can get some popper action, and if that doesn't work, we're gonna take them on probably intermediate lines and big flushable flies. So follow me on a cool trip. <laughs> Big Daddy film we made, the Fly TV issue. Um, I had a lot of questions regarding what kind of gear I use, what kind of rods I fish with, what kind of lines I use, when I use them, and what kind of flies I prefer and stuff like that. So I thought I'll take five minutes to walk you through this. 
just a quick what I use. Um, we're going to try to uh, get some action on a popper rod here. And um, this is the uh, Big Daddy, uh, the Visions Big Daddy, eight and a half foot for line nine. It's a really nice rod. I fish it with a floating line. It's the same, um, it's the Big Daddy line. And um, I just uh, fish a big popper on a single hook. They're easy to tie and you can make them in various color. They're really cool, it's good action in the summertime. It's a little bit too cold in the water at the moment, but it's still, a, it's, it's fun when you get them up on the surface. This is probably what I fish the least of the time with the popper rod, but it's, it's fun. And these rods work really good for, for other conditions too. But if you're gonna buy one rod, or at least one line weight, I think you should buy a 909. Uh, and you should rig it with an intermediate line. Uh, th that line you can use for almost everything. Uh, you can fish it from, if you fish an intermediate line, for example, really, really fast, the fly will just go straight up to the surface. So that's why they're really good to have. And um, I think you should never leave your home without a fast sinking line. And then if we go over to the flies I use. Um, today I prefer to fish with a tube fly. And there are a few various reasons for it. For, mostly is that you have a good durability of the flies. You can fish with them a long time. You can have a lot of fish on them. And even when the hook is shot, you can just change the hook and you're good to go again. So you can easily have a hundred fish on a fly. And I like to fish these a little bit natural colors. These guys, they imitate a, a perch. They're in olive and orange and stuff like that. And they work very good when the fish are spawned and it's becoming a little bit warmer in the water. And they go to these natural colors and they go starting to feed on perch because they spawn right after the pike. And then, of course, a green and gold. Never leave home without it. It's a very good color. It will work almost um, the whole year round. And then a pattern that has been working really well in Sweden is the we call it a kind of a bream pattern. Uh, in the spring and also late in the fall, the bream comes in in big schools in these shallow areas where we're going to fish. And then you, read to you need to have really big flies and you want to tie them in gold, almost the surface and all the way down to probably in a meter and a half. Um, this is a nine foot for line nine weight, a nine weight, uh, a nine feet rod. Uh, I like these foam handles because they don't, they don't get dirty, don't get old. And the action of these rods are a little bit softer, so they're easy to move these big flies. I don't prefer these really fast saltwater rods because I think they're kind of hard to get it, get it going when you uh, fish really big flies. So this is my first choice of a, of a, of a rod and uh, a combination with line. And the second rod I use a lot is um, the Sink 3. Here's the same, same rod again. It's a Big Daddy 909. Um, this is a Sing 3 line, um, and this is a line that you can fish a little bit deeper with. You can fish it all the way down to probably 3 meters, depending on what kind of fly you, are, you have on it. You can also go up to a 10 weight if you fer prefer like it, if you fish really big flies and, and very windy conditions, but I think the 9, the nine weights work very well. Um, and then probably the, ro the, ro the line weight I fish the least is a Sing 5. Um, but it's really good to have, um, probably just have a spool in the boat or if you go in a, in a river or something like that, you can get deep really, you can get down deep really fast. But also sometimes in the summertime when the fish is standing on like two meters of water and you need to fish fast, you need to have these fast sinking lines because otherwise you can't get the fly down enough to be able to fish it really fast. Golden silver that imitates these big breams and uh, you need to have them big because otherwise the, the big fish won't won't take it small bait. They, they are, they're feeding on these like a one pound uh, breams and you need to have big flies for that. And then a pattern that, that is, a, is based on a, a lure in Sweden. And this is called a dirty roach. It's kind of a, yeah, it's a kind of a dirty roach. It's white, olive, green and gold. These are basically the colors that you could work um, almost every water with and also all conditions. If you just throw in a, like a blue and silver, 
or something like that, or a silver bait fish pattern, you're, you have probably most of the conditions you will ever face, you know, like that. So that's a good tip of mine. Uh, keep in a little bit uh, natural colors, imitate, like kind of match the hatch, and um, you will have a good selection of flies. And then the question is how we rig these guys. I have a good friend down in Denmark who um, a few, few years ago showed me how to... Um, actually, he was tying all his pike hooks with a, with a stinger hook. And um, Thomas, his name is, um, he uh, hooked me into these. And I have uh, kind of put the development a little bit further. Um, 